Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. And guess what? We are going to chat tonight about getting, 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 getting that buttery, smooth finish that we're all looking for. Uh, I have answered a bunch of questions today and we have been working on something that's uh, still can't be announced yet, but we had to work on that today. And it's going to be fun when I do get to tell you about it. And I've got my little Ridley Ann here with me and Isabel's underneath the table. But we want to talk about getting that buttery smooth finish. Um, I have a couple of projects. Y'all know I've been working on cabinets. I'm always working on cabinets and a couple of pieces of furniture. And we are going to work on something fun tomorrow at 4 p.m. on Chalk Paint 101. But today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about getting that buttery buttery smooth finish that everybody's looking for. Now, most of the time, I'm going to turn y'all down a little hair up a little bit. There we go. Most of the time, um, I tell y'all, I love synthetic brushes and I don't want to use, a lot of people think that I use new brushes or something like that and that's how I get better finishes. But I'm going to show you, these are brushes that you can tell by looking at them have been used, used, used. And we're going to talk about getting that finish. That's a little crooked. Um, First, don't put so much paint on your brush. These little white tips right here, make sure you have paint up to there because over time, if you're painting something, it is going to get on up in your brush anyway. Another thing to remember, um, try to keep your brush damp. Mr. Bottle is my favorite way, but I'm not even telling you you have to go out and buy you a Mr. Bottle. Put you a little dish of water or whatever you need to do. Make sure your brush stays damp. Now that's what works for me. I have friends who don't dampen their brush and it works fine. But the other thing to remember is after you've put your coat of paint on, get something like this. And we're going to do it tonight and we're gonna do it on dark colors because I think a lot of people um, get nervous about it and they do a little bit of a, uh, a finished sand over a dark color and they see the white on there. It gets kind of chalky and it makes them nervous. And they're thinking, oh my gosh, I messed my thing up. So we're going to do it over my favorite um, coffee bean because I want y'all to see. But first I'm gonna demo us how you need to apply your paint. Um, let me grab this board. This board's been painted a bunch. We put our glass bead on it the other day, but we are going to use the edge of it now. And thank you all for uh, all of your support. I appreciate that. And we are going to turn you down so you can see what I'm doing. You don't need to see me. Most of the time you don't even need to hear me. Okay, so we are going to use putty for this demonstration. And we are going to use a less expensive brush, albeit a synthetic brush. And I like to dampen my brush. This brush has been sitting out here on my porch all day. So now my brush is damp. Okay, what I like to do is, usually I wipe it on my clothes, but um, I like to just get a little bit of paint on my brush and go back and forth nice and smoothly. Okay? And if your brush starts dragging, it needs a little bit more moisture in it, okay? And then I'm going to hold this up to the light so you can see. Not only does Dixie Bell self-level, but when you're doing it like this with just a little bit of paint at a time, and I know maybe you don't get it on as quickly as you'd like. Maybe your piece takes longer to paint. But it's a great way to make sure you get a nice, smooth finish. All right, now my brush, I can feel it dragging, so I'm going to add a little bit more water, and we're going to go back over this to smooth it out. All right, that's it. Don't keep brushing it. That's a big problem. Now look at this. Can y'all see? It's very nice and very smooth. I'm going to put it over here. Maybe the light's better. It is very even, very smooth, and that is the first coat. So that's what you've got to remember is that's what we're working on. Nice and smooth first coat. It's a thin coat, but it's nice and smooth, and I didn't get very much paint in my brush, okay? And... You can do it with a round brush, although this is better for details, or you can do it with a brush like this. This one's, you know, had better days, but it'll give you the same finish. All right, now you see how nice and smooth, and we'll look at that again in just a minute, but 
I'm going to pull this out, and the dog's walked on it, so I'm sorry. It's got a few little scratches. But once I put this coat of coffee bean on here, I like to do this. Make it nice and smooth. Because I told y'all before, I feel my finishes as much as I paint my finishes. All right? So once you've done that, you can feel how nice and smooth it is. But can you see all that chalkiness? If you're worried about the chalkiness, take a tack cloth. Or if you don't have a tack cloth, take a damp cloth and wipe over it. Get rid of all that chalkiness. Okay? You get rid of all of that. And now once this dries, it'll be nice and coffee beany, if that's even a word. And you won't have any problems at all. It'll be beautiful. But don't forget, see I wiped off all the dust that we had used, so now I don't have to worry about it. So and now I'm not gonna have those places where it's chalky. If you notice, I'm gonna turn y'all up just a second. All right, if you happen to notice that after you've put your clear coat on, because the question that I get a lot of times is after people put their clear coat on, they'll notice that if they bump a piece that's painted in um, aubergine or bunker heel or, uh, coffee bean or one of the really dark colors, they'll say that they get a little bit of the um, dusty, they'll get a white mist on it or something. And so the best thing to do if you get that, that means that you put too light a coat of your clear coat, whether it's Gator Hide clear coat, Easy Peasy Spray Wax or whatever. Another thing to remember is on these dark colors, you can also use How to Do Hemp Oil. And if you use how do you do hemp oil, then you're not going to have that. But now see that's dried. Can you see there's no more light places. There are still dog scratches, I'm sorry to say. But there's no more light places or anything like that. And it works no matter what you're doing. Because same rad pad, and this is the super fine rad pad. I'm going to go over this one because it's light. And I'll do the same process. I just want it to be nice and smooth and you can feel a distinct difference when you do that but you can see I wiped it off with a damp cloth and if I wouldn't put my fingerprints on there you can see you've got a nice dark piece so don't be hesitant to do a finish sand with um, a Dixie Belle sander uh, a rad pad super fine is my favorite but you can use whatever works best for you I know uh, a finishing pad is a great thing. Uh, the little white finishing pads that most of the Dixie Bell retailers carry. Uh, some people burnish it with a paper bag. So it's not like you have to buy something extra. Go to the grocery store and ask them to put some of your stuff in a paper bag and there you go. You can burnish your piece with a paper bag and you've got it made. You've got something that's gonna smooth it down. If you notice that chalkiness though, if you see some white dust or some chalkiness, then all you have to do is take a damp cloth or a tack cloth. If you have a tack cloth, you can wipe over it. And I promise you, it gets rid of that haze, the dust, and things like that. Now we're going to go back to this one because it's, you know, hotter than what out here in Georgia. Okay, so now you can see it's nice and smooth. But even though it's nice and smooth, a lot of times, especially if you're doing this for a customer, if you're doing it for you, maybe you don't want to do this. But if you're doing this for a customer, just take that rad pad or finishing pad or whatever it is and go over it very lightly. A lot of times, even things that I stain with no paint gel stain or voodoo gel stain, I like to go over it very lightly because I'm telling you, a lot of people get nervous because of the haze, but I promise you, even after you clear coat, it makes such a difference. I mean, the difference in the way this feels is amazing. So a lot of people ask, how do you get a nice smooth finish? Because I love it. When I rub my hand across it, I want it to feel almost like a freshly waxed car. Have y'all ever waxed a car? Well, you know, when you first start, it feels kind of, uh, you can't even slide your rag across it. But then after you wax the car, your rag will slide all the way across it. Well, that's kind of what we're going for here. And you can see our, we went over our little glass beads. Um, so they're kind of, oh, that's kind of a unique texture. I may have to do that on a piece. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The green comes through with the mermaid tail in it. Um, may have to do that on a piece because that's pretty awesome. But it's so nice and smooth. And all it took was just a few little rubs of this. So a lot of times people think that it's an extra step to sand between uh, coats or to sand between coats of gator hide or something like that. But extra step is kind of a misnomer because 
even on a big piece. Now, I do cut my rad pads in half, okay? So they are a full size. Um, but even on a big piece, it literally takes you less than five minutes to do a finished sand over it. So put your coat of paint, let it dry, put your second coat of paint, allow that to dry, and then if you want to, take a rad pad or a paper bag or whatever and go over your entire finish. And then put your clear coat on, and a lot of times people don't do it until, they're, until after their first coat of clear coat. But why don't you just test it and see what works best for you. But now I can promise you this, if you have never sanded, and I'm using that word lightly, if you have never rubbed, sanded, used a finishing pad, uh, there's so many different things you can use. Whatever it is that you choose to use, if you've never done that between finishes, then you don't realize what a difference it makes in a finish. Because other than you don't really want to sand ray stencils or something like that. I'm telling you, these rad pads, these are what I use to um, cut off the edges of my decoupage and things like that. But I'm telling you, this right here makes such a difference. I wish that there was feel a vision even though that sounds a little creepy. Um, I wish you could feel how smooth this is. And you saw how, what a difference it made in my coffee bean. We had when we sand it over it, you could see the white haze, but we took a damp paper towel, which everybody has in their workshop in their kitchen, and just went right over it, and now there's no haze, there's no anything, so you could clear coat this, you could gator hide it or whatever. Now, another thing we're going to chit chat about right quick is gator hide. I have been on the phone with several people in the last couple of days, and we've talked about gator hide in some point of the conversation every time, and a lot of people struggle with gator hide, and I'm going to tell you, gator hide is one of those things that like polycrylic is for me. Uh, Minwax polycrylic is what I used to use before Dixie Bell came out with gator hide, and I got to tell you, I've never, ever, 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 ever gotten a good finish with Minwax polycrylic, but it's not polycrylic's fault that I suck at it because it's just one of those things, but if you are using gator hide and you're using a good synthetic brush or a sponge, Make sure it's damp, but also make sure that you're not doing this. A lot of times I see people put on gator hide and then they're brushing and brushing and brushing. When you're looking for that nice, smooth finish, the object is to apply your paint or your top coat or your gator hide or whatever, apply it as thinly as you can with as little brushing as possible because I'm telling you, it makes all the difference. And once it starts drying, if you happen to know a spot that you've missed, whether it's paint, gator hide, top coat, whatever, if you notice a spot that you've missed, what you need to do is wait until it dries. If it's already begun drying, I'm telling you from experience, I'm not asking for a friend, I'm telling you from experience, you will mess your piece up if you go back and you brush it after it starts drying. So leave it alone. Um, if it's already gotten tacky, then it will. Sometimes, if it hasn't gotten completely tacky, you can dampen your brush a little and brush back over it and you might get away with it. But sometimes it makes a huge difference. Another thing, if you paint a piece and uh, you notice that you've got some kind of issue and you've already clear coated it and everything, if you go back over it with paint without clear coating it, it will stand out. It will be a different color. So the other thing to remember when you're using finishes like this, like if I clear coated this and then let's say my dog walked on it, which I know y'all can't imagine that happening, and her nails went through the paint or something because her nails are like this big around, um, then if I try to fix that up, the best thing to do if you have something like that, again, pull out your little rad pad, sand just a little bit, sand lightly so that you feather that boo-boo you feather those edges because otherwise you've got like a divot there. And so it's like a crater. Even though it's a little tiny crater, it is a crater there. So take your rad pad or your sanding pad from Dixie Bell or whatever it is that you use and just kind of take your finger and just rub over it a little bit because what you're doing is you're feathering in that edge. So that boo-boo is not a crater anymore. It just kind of slow, it's a gentle heel now. So what you're gonna do is then when you get ready to put it in, take an artist brush and just touch it a little bit and let that dry, but now feather it in. Don't just put a dollop on there. Feather it very lightly and allow that to dry and then do the same thing with your top coat, whether it's gator hide or whatever, because I'm telling you, 
that is the best way to fix boo-boos because I live with mastiffs and they help me in my workshop and they help me everywhere and they are a blessing but they are like bulls in a china shop and they will knock a dresser over they will knock a chest of drawers over um, they don't mean to but they're big boys and girls so um, we have to fix boo-boos from time to time and um, if you are fixing a boo-boo from a mastiff you'll learn just smooth that divot out just a little bit and like I say this is what I use but use whatever works best for you I'm not trying to tell you to go out and buy something extra just use whatever you've got but just take that little artist brush if you don't have an artist brush take your fingertip next best thing take your fingertip and just touch that paint on there but don't leave a big dollop touch that paint over there and then kind of pat over it and I'm telling you it will make all of the difference in the world because it will feather into your area and then when you put your clear coat on if you don't have a, a brush again just a little light touch but now when I say light touch I mean like a butterfly kiss just barely have your finger touch it and that will fix your divots if you're looking for a smooth finish I hope I have helped you I actually have a um, a blog post about getting a smooth finish that I will tag in this in the comments of this video and maybe that will help you because my goal is to maybe help you not have to go through what I did to learn all these lessons because I do have dogs that turn things over and you know I'm clumsy in my own right so I don't even need to blame it on the dogs sometimes we make boo-boo sometimes you back into something sometimes you bump a drawer after it's been painted and it the paint isn't dry or whatever but I know a lot of people struggle with uh, chalky places on dark colors so y'all know how to fix that now and you know how to have a smooth finish and you know how to fill in divots if you have a boo-boo so if you're working on a piece and you got questions I am here to answer it I am back online and I'm back doing what I like to do and uh, I thank you all for your prayers and your concern this week remember that I am on chalk paint 101 tomorrow at 4 p.m. and I hope to see you there thanks for watching y'all and have a safe and happy Saturday evening <laughs>